Mathematics at Init College, a YouTube channel for high school mathematics education. Mathematics 3C and Mathematics 4, Swedish high school education system. Miscellaneous problems on derivatives. Hi, this is Bobak. In this video, I'm going to solve the following problem for you. Consider the following polynomial p of x equals to x to the 100 divided by 100 plus x to the 99 divided by 99 plus up to x to the 2 divided by 2 plus x plus 1. Determine p prime of 1 over p prime of 0. I recommend you to pause the video now and try to give the problem a try yourself. If you do everything correctly, what you will get at the end is p prime over p prime of 1 over p prime of 0 is equal to 100. Uh, okay, now let us solve the problem. You know that if the most natural way probably to calculate this fraction is to calculate the numerator and the denominator individually and then divide them together. Okay, so if I want to calculate the derivative of a function, any function at a given number, the first thing that I have to do is to calculate the derivative of the function itself using differentiation rules mainly. And then after that, I uh, replace the x in the derivative by that particular value. For the, uh, by that particular value, for the numerator it is one, for the denominator it is zero. But anyway, I have to calculate p prime of x first. Okay, the first thing that I want to I want you to realize is that even though they have written in the form of a fraction, but they can be written much simpler. Yes, because p of x can be written in this form. Instead of writing x to the 100 divided by 100, I can write 1 over 100 multiplied by x to the 100. And then the next one becomes 1 over 99 x to the 99. And then it continues until uh, I reach, for example, to 1 over 2 x squared. Then the next one is x, the next one is 1. The reason that I leave this space empty because it is instructive to also write the previous term. So it is clear that the previous term would be one third x to the 3. Okay, now we know that if I have the sum of two functions, or more functions of course, and I want to take the derivative of the sum, I can take the derivative of each one of them and add them. This is called the sum rule. This is not just only for two functions, you can use it for more than two functions. And then if I have a constant c multiplied by a function, and if I want to take the derivative, then I just take the derivative of the function and simply multiply that const by that constant. Okay, so now if I use these two rules, the derivative of p of x is very simple to calculate. So here, for example, I have to calculate the derivative of this plus the derivative of this, up derivative of this, and up to the end. Yes, but for calculating the derivative of this, one over one hundred plays the role of this pre. Uh, this uh, multiplicative constant, so it means that I don't do anything with that constant, I just take the derivative of the function. And then you also know that if I have x to any constant, and I want to take the derivative of this, this c goes down, and then I will write x to power one unit less. Okay, so if I use all these information that I provided here for you, the derivative is 1 over 100, then I concentrate on the derivative of this one, so 100 goes down, and then x to the power of 1 less, which is 199. Yes, and the next one, again, 1 over 199 is there, and then the derivative of x to the 99, 99 goes down, and then I will have x to the 98. Yes, and this process will continue. When I reach here, I do the same thing. So I will have 1 over 3, 3 goes down, x to power 1 less is 2, then I have 1 over 2, 2 goes down, x to power 1, which we don't write, the derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of the constant number 1 is 0. Yes? 
but I can now simplify my derivative. You see, this 100 and this 100 in the denominator cancel out, this one cancel out, and then this process will continue, the cancellation will continue. So what is left for me is x to the 99, the next one would be x to the 98, and then it continues up to this term, 3 and 3 cancel, I will be left with x squared. The next term, the 1 over 2 and 2 cancel, I will be left with x. And finally, I will have 1. Uh, okay, now I need to calculate p prime of 1. So therefore, if I ask you what is p prime of 1, and what is p prime of 0, you can immediately calculate them. p prime of 0 is much simpler, so what does it mean? It means that you go to the p prime and replace every x that you see here with this given number 0. But if I put 0 here, this totally will be 0, this will be 0, every of these terms will be 0, so what is left is just 1. So this becomes 0 plus 0 up to 0 and then plus 1, so the answer is simply 1. But what happens if I plug a 1 here instead of x? So this becomes 1 to power 99 plus 1 to power 98 up to 1 to power 2 plus 1 plus 1. But all of these terms is actually equal to 1, yes? because 1 to any power is 1, so it becomes 1 plus 1 up to plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. But how many 1s are there? Be careful, there are not 99, there are 100 ones. Because here, if I ask you what is the exponent, you would say y, 1, the next exponent is 2, the next one is 3 up to 99. So it means from here to here is 99 terms. Yes, but I have one extra term here, so in general, in total, I have 100 terms. Now, in this case, all those 100 terms are equal to 1. So I have 100 ones added together, so the answer is definitely 100. Therefore, so let me rise uh, hence. Avoid repeating. So then p prime of 1 divided by p prime of 0. Instead of p prime of 1, I put 100. Instead of p prime of 0, I put 1. And it is clear when I divide these two numbers, it becomes 100 as I have written in the answer. So the answer is 100. Okay, I hope that the video uh, has been useful for you. Until the next video, be safe and goodbye.